Your sexuality is not static, linear. It's not a triangle going up to the peak and then downhill. Your sexuality is a circle like the seasons. By the end of this video, you will understand the different stages, i.e. the seasons in your sexuality. Create more compassion and understanding on your body so that you can better express where you are rather than fighting against your natural way. Welcome to the channel. I'm Jane, an intimacy coach. I help individuals and couples to build body confidence and deep intimacy. Let's dive into the sexuality stages. There are five stages in our sexuality. You may experience different stages at the same time, and you will go through seasons like summer to fall and fall to winter. What works the best? is we ride through the different stages, like we experience four seasons and we get the most benefit of the, each stage. The first stage is resting. Resting can have many different forms. For example, you never had sex before or you just had a baby and your body needs to rest and recover or you consciously chose to be celibate after a long relationship. Many people feel really bad about the resting phase. The common reaction is, I want to get over it as soon as I can. But resting is necessary when our physical body needs recover. You want to use that time to restore the connection with yourself and have more presence, have more awareness and time for other things other than sex. All of that is very valid. So the key in resting phase is to restore your energy, connect with your emotional body, rest your physical body, and recharge your energy. You can consider it as a winter season. The resting phase is like our sleeping time. It's pretty important. We will store up nutrition and make our body rest up for the next spring to come. Just imagine if we bypass the resting time, like a person consistently not getting adequate sleep. Our sexual energy is a sacred resource for us. The more we can be attuned into it, the better we can show up as vibrant and connected with our loved ones. The second phase is healing. Healing and resting often coexist but they don't always come together. Healing means you are taking a more active role to repair your wounding. The wounding could come from a long-term relationship and breakup, could be divorce or a traumatic event. Without taking care of the wound, it will slow us down in the future. Too often, I hear people feel they have to rush through to what they want, get into a relationship, but ignore what the past event has done to them. It will look like you repeat the same toxic relationship patterns over and over. The healing stage will save you a lot of headache and energy when it's done properly. Otherwise, just imagine you have to keep dealing with the toxic relationship patterns. Even you may change partners, but you see the pattern keep occurring. That's why the healing is our foundation. Resting is more about giving us space to restore our energy, restore our physical vibrancy. Healing is to align our mind, body in a neutral state so that we can teach the toxic patterns, start fresh and help us speed up. If the resting and healing stage are like winter and pre-springtime, the next stage, we are moving into the springtime. And the third one is curious. You start getting curious about what's out there. What's in something that you want to explore for your pleasure, desire, new way of sexual communication. And when you get more curious, usually you start reading more books and talk to like-minded people. You are approaching the edge of your comfort zone and you're eager to know what's more out there. That's why it's called the springtime. You don't have to have a partner to explore the curious stage. It could be you're taking a new course, trying a new toy, and you started dating again, and you are having more self-pleasure 
or going out for different workshops related to desire, love, and sexualities, you are getting back into the game again. The curious stage may last quite long. Some people may have it for years. Some people, it's much shorter. The healing stage and the curious stage can coexist, more like stacking. The key in curious stage is be aware of your comfort zone and be ready to stretch your comfort zone. The stage after curious is called adventurous. So curious and adventurous also can coexist. The difference is when you're mainly in the curious stage, it may look like you're thinking what to try and what to learn and prepare yourself for new experience. In the adventure stage, you are not just thinking or planning, but you are actually trying it out. Again, it could be by yourself or with partner or partners. At adventure stage, you know you're stretching your comfort zone. And that adventure looks very different for everyone. Your sexuality is defined by you. Whatever experience you want to take on, the important part for adventure stage is to integrate your experience. Many times people ask me, how come I have done things I wanted to do for a long time, but afterwards I didn't feel very good about it. It's quite often that people keep experimenting but didn't allow much time for digestion. In adventure stage, digestion looks like you share your experience, what went well for you, what you liked and disliked in experience for you with your partner or with a trustworthy friend, or if you have a support like a therapist or a coach, share with them. This part is called digestion. If you want to have a great and enjoyable adventure stage, digestion is the must have step. Before we introduce the last stage, it's good to reinforce that the sexuality stages is a circle, which means depends on your physical condition, life circumstances, and any events that happen to you, you will move through the stages. For most people, they don't stay in one stage forever. It's like you're going through the four seasons, right? There's a seasonal change. And you get the different sense and benefit of each season. The fifth stage is called transformative. Have you heard of secret sexuality? Have you been curious about using sexual energy as a channel for your personal development, for your higher consciousness? You may hear this kind of work in Eastern philosophy, such as Tantra and Taoism. In Tantra philosophy, sexuality and spirituality are two sides of one coin. In the transformative stage, you actively explore sexuality is connected with our life force and our spirituality, or some people call it higher consciousness. When you got there, it doesn't mean like you'll be there forever. Again, life happens right? So this is a circle. The beauty of the circle is it does not just depend on your physical condition, on your hormones. And with more exploration and with more embodiment practice, your comfort zone can keep expanding and you can have more fun and adventures in pleasure, in sexuality, with your desire. The whole circle can develop beyond what we think our sexual active stage will be. As you can tell, in adventure stage and in transformative stage, there are so many different possibilities for energetic lovemaking, sensual play, and erotic connection. If you're in a situation that you are unclear how to navigate the different stages in you or in your relationship with a partner, you can reach out and have a conversation with me. More information in the link below. Once you learn how to navigate the each stage with ease, you will get more benefit and power by going through the seasons rather than feel disempowered or defeated by your age or the circumstances. Let me know in the comment what you resonate with in this video. Bye.